Homer beat the odds and became the first American in over 100 years to win silver in the individual men's saber in Rio. Now, five years later, he aims for gold in Tokyo. And the protests are continuing in places like right here in New York City where people are still coming out to let their voices be heard. But when you talk to the people here and you hear from the athletes and the politicians, the one thing they're saying is it's important for their voices to be heard now, but there still is a lot more work to do. Many players say they relish the opportunity to play a professional hockey game in an outdoor arena. What they say is difficult, though, is preparing for the elements. If you check the websites of various sports media outlets, you will see a lot of looking back deep dives into legendary players and games, rankings of all-time teams, and even reevaluating former drafts. There seems to be a limited amount of looking ahead, as nobody truly knows when sports as we have known it will return. Hundreds have gathered here at the corner of 51st and Park Avenue. You see there's a lot of people here for the protest. United We Stand rally for Colin Kaepernick. A lot of people are frustrated with the fact that Colin Kaepernick still does not have a job in the NFL. With a snappy song, dance, and enthusiasm to spare, Emotep Academy in Atlanta, Georgia, charmed voters and took home the title of national winner. Now they can support the movement for Colin Kaepernick going forward. Many of the people I spoke to still have hope as the NFL season is about to begin. Just before 30-year-old Daryl Homer packs up his gear and heads to Tokyo, he is working hard in the gym with his trainer. And with his foil in hand, working with his coach to perfect his moves, plot out his strategy, and get his mind into Olympic mode. For this Bronx native, the competition has already begun. The reality is everyone's prepared on a super high level. It takes an incredible amount of like focus, emotional control, and then on top of that, a bit of luck to actually achieve the medal. Homer was born in the U.S. Virgin Islands and raised in the Bronx, and now lives in Harlem. He is a five-time gold medalist at the Pan American Fencing Championships, and in 2015, won a silver medal at the World Fencing Championships becoming the first American male to ever medal in his discipline. Homer beat the odds and became the first American in over 100 years to win silver in the individual men's saber in Rio. Now, five years later, he aims for gold in Tokyo. His trainer, Nikki Kimbrough, says he is ready and has developed a training system for him to peak at the moment he steps on stage. I started training him at first, like, let's just get him back into shape, let's get him conditioned. But along with getting him conditioned, let's get specific. Let's work on the balance. He's fast, he's powerful, but can you go here and come here at the same time and then pause, you know? So those are the things I got to do, and it was exciting. This soon-to-be three-time Olympian feels he is ready, physically and mentally, to bring home the gold. I'm hoping that I just kind of prepare on a really high level, which I think I'm doing, and then also that I can perform on a high level, which is like another gift you have to have, like right? to, to be able to do all the work and then also like handle the pressure of all that work at the event, and then you get a little lucky too. Homer is a member of Team Toyota, which promotes believing in dreams and words of wisdom and encouragement, surrounded by Olympic athletes that live the credo, never give up. They are giving their total best, 100% commitment to the games. So we feel like it's our responsibility to continue to back them up. One of the first things we learned at Toyota, that Toyota is not a car company, it's a mobility company. I thought that was like a very, very powerful thing. But when you talk about accessibility and you talk about fencing and the stuff that I want to do in the sport and make it more accessible to people of color and to people in my community. Darrell feels there's plenty of space for everyone to be seen. And that's really where the growth of the sport is going to come from. When there are more diverse champions, there will be more diverse stories to tell about the sport. This is Dexter Henry. It's a chant heard across the United States and around the world. Protesters hitting the streets, speaking out against police brutality and systemic racism. I think at this point, right, like this is a catalytic moment in history and everybody needs to be as vocal as they possibly can. We don't just need simple banners, right, and a loud recognition of the issue. We need people who are willing to say, like, from the ground up, all of this is fucked up. Sports fan Chappelle Mallard says the time to stand up is now. The Brooklyn, New York native has attended several New York City protests following the killings of African Americans Breonna Taylor and George Floyd by police officers earlier this year. Mallard says the issues he is speaking out against are deeper than recent tragedies. It's not about random incidents of hate or cruelty. 
It's not about individual instances of brutality. It's about how systems fuck people. It's about how structurally racism is embedded into everything. And we need to question and push back and scream about all of it. This is a moment we have leverage right now. We have a, we have a moment in time. People are gonna look back, our kids are gonna look back at this and say, you are a part of that. In the world of professional sports, both current and former athletes are speaking out too. When was murder ever worth it? Yeah. 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 But if it's a black man, mm -hmm. it's approved. Some are joining in protests, while others are vocal on social media or using their personal platforms. This is a very special edition of the show called The Cookout, where a group of us are going to come together. Hugh Roberts, host of the Backyard Footy Podcast, is also a star center back playing for the Charlotte Independence of the United the Soccer League. Redirected on frame twice, a third time, and Roberts puts it in. But when off the pitch, using his voice and his platform is the goal. I think that we're here and we're given this platform for a reason and not necessarily just for us, but for the next wave coming through. We want to make sure that their times are easier than what we had. The seven-year USL veteran says he's always been vocal on issues of social injustice or systemic racism. However, a recent event hit too close to home. What really hit me the most was Ahmaud Arbery's death because, especially as a professional athlete during this quarantine, we've been jogging all the time, going for runs and stuff. So the fact that he was killed, you know, just going for a jog really hit me. Back in February, a 25-year-old unarmed black man was shot to death while jogging in a neighborhood outside of Brunswick, Georgia. This occurring after two white men followed him in a truck. The unarmed man was Ahmad Arbery. His murder inspired Roberts to create a video in which he asked others to speak up. I spoke with another USL player who was encouraged to now see more athletes using their voice. Overall, I mean, as you can, as you've seen, the, the response has been massive from most of all the sports around the world, so it's, it's been good. AJ Patterson plays for the Charleston Battery. The midfielder is aware that despite being vocal, some sports fans believe athletes should stick to sports. Do you feel there's a responsibility for athletes to speak out because of your platform in this situation? I think athletes all around are looked up to, and because we're known for our certain sport, maybe people of other ideologies still follow you because of what you do on the field. So if you're pushing a positive message and you're getting the facts out there, that could change their mind. That could, you know, bring information to them that they may not know. And it's not just the athletes. Some teams and leagues have responded and joined the Black Lives Matter conversation as well. There have been organizations that have taken it, you know, have been more authoritative, um, have been more specific in terms of uh, what they see as wrong in society, and they've they have talked about it. Um, so I think I think it depends on, you know, there's, there is no you know, it hasn't been uniform. For me, like, I look at those statements and I'm just like, number one, if the statement does not specify um, racism or black people or black bodies, that to me is not a statement addressing the problem. Like, I like that you're saying unity is important, but I think that we have to be honest as a society and say specifically, this is the issue. The National Football League, where 70% of the players are black, now has a completely different take than they did when Colin Kaepernick took a knee during the national anthem to protest police brutality. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. Pay attention to the rhetoric that's used. Black athletes said, you silenced us. And the NFL's response was, we didn't listen. Those are two very different things. And I think legally speaking, those are two very different things and they worded it that way on purpose, right? There's a difference between being oblivious and doing shit on purpose. They purposely silenced people and intimidated people. Like, I don't miss me with the bullshit. On the streets of America, the issue rings loud and clear. People are protesting for change. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! And the protests are continuing in places like right here in New York City where people are still coming out to let their voices be heard. But when you talk to the people here and you hear from the athletes and the politicians, the one thing they're saying is it's important for their voices to be heard now, but there still is a lot more work to do. It's great the athletes are using their platform to speak on these issues, but it would be nice if those athletes were also out there in front of these leaders and officials making demands. It's people, you know, standing up and, and becoming a part of the process in whatever way they can. And hopefully it translates over to 
uh, you know, voting and things like that, that that can actually make a difference. As the voice of athletes fighting for social justice gets louder and stronger, there is a hope for a future that includes equality for all. I'm hoping a lot of athletes get bit by the bug and they're like, yo, if I believe in something, I'm going to say something. But like I also said, I hope they also realize that their visibility might also be a privilege. How do I leverage that to get other people involved? How else are things supposed to change without an abrupt awakening like this? And it's been going on for centuries. Do you think it's just going to all of a sudden change to smooth? No, there has to be some rough times. The change is going to come. That, that's inevitable. I, I just know it's going to happen. It's exciting and I'm very, I'm, I think this has been a, a big eye opener. And, you know, I see a lot of things on Twitter. Oh, it, it was just a trend. It's dying down. It's not a trend. It's happening every single day. And it's just going to continue to happen until, you know, the, uh, the change comes.